hello <laughs> welcome to the knit girls this is episode 646 i'm laura also known as lawa i am laura well i'm not laura i'm Leslie. <laughs> oh, yes. um, also known as you don't call me less today is the 11th of march 2023 it's pi day right 3.1 no one four one four never mind and then the day after that's the ides, ides of march, march. sorry yeah. julia caesar Yesterday was Mario Day, because it was M-A-R-1-0. Oh. Um, it's possible that Nintendo is aware that I like Mario. <laughs> is it? Um, I thought of you the other day. I have a new game that I want to show you. I think you might like. Anyway. Um, so, we are going to talk about knitting and some spinning. We both have spinning this week. That's exciting. Yep. This is mostly going to be the Laura show because I've got two things I've touched all week and that's it. Well, I have a smidge. Um, I do have a pair of socks and the needles. These are by Nomadic. Well, now I'm at the end of a row. The yarn. Yeah. So they look like this. I can even get out the tag. Oh, I just found money. That's exciting. So, Nomadic Yarns. This is her trusty sock base. It's 462 yards of a superwash merino nylon. And it's oi with the poodles already, which is a Gilmore Girls reference. This is actually the second sock. The first one is already done. Tell me you, see, uh, you district tested at work without telling me you district <laughs> tested at work. So, the first one is done. I wanted some shorty socks because it is if you can't tell by the way Leslie and I are. It is very warm right now. Listening. <laughs> um, so, shorty socks, I don't have a ton of. Typically I knit like six inch cuffs, so these are three inch cuffs. And yeah, I'm excited. Lots of progress on those. Um, and then the other thing that got touched this week is I picked back up my sweater and shoved all the things on top of it. So this is the Stripey Unicorn by Hohi Locatelli. That was going to be my next question. Which sweater? Um, yeah, I do have two sweaters on the needles. I have this and then I have a sweater out of a linen silk blend that only needs I-cord trim. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So, yep. So this got a couple of rows in it. I picked up my iPad and I had noted where I had left off. Ah, like a responsible uh, person. Like, yes. Thank you. And then I double checked that just in case I was not really a responsible person. Um, so this is the Stripey Unicorn by Hohi Locatelli. One thing that I changed is I did change the top part to have ribbing. Um, it was a rolled hem? It was a, yeah, like a rolled, yes, a rolled hem at the top. And that bothers me. So went for ribbing. Um, I am... Almost two repeats through the increases. It calls for two more repeats and then um, a repeat of six. So I'm a little bit concerned about um, like, depth of the yes, yoke. depth of yoke. Although the way this is laying on me, maybe I should be concerned about sizing a little bit more too. <laughs> well, it's all scrunched up on Yeah, me. it <laughs> is. Um, so there is that and it has short rows in it so one side is definitely shorter than the other so i need to make sure when i measure it i'm measuring for the correct depth but usually um this is a raglan yoke hybrid and usually on raglans i go to like 10 and a half inches is like the perfect depth for me so we'll see and you're measuring that from like your collarbone to the middle of your yeah underarm. yeah where i like it to lie up here to yeah, the middle of my underarm. Um, so that's something I need to be aware of. And it's just slow going because it's a different type of increases that happen. It's not brainless. Yeah, at a different rate. So it's something I am going to have to think about. I'm using my own hand spun. Some Into the Worlds Herding Cats colorway. Um, combined with some Roundhouse uh, round barn fiber mill Jacob. So yeah. And I'm knitting that on size threes and my socks are on size zeros. So those are the two things that I have knit on 
this week. It's been a lot more, well, there's been some knitting because I have a finished object, but mostly spinning. I like this. I'll take this if you don't like it. I was going to use it for um, a sweater, but if I end up not using it, then yes. I like it. Um, I will talk about it. She'll show it so that everybody <laughs> can see it. Uh, so the only thing that I worked on this week, regardless of what the show notes say, is my Directions sweater. This is by, I don't remember, um, Claudia Eisenkolb. That's what it is. And the only thing I've got left is I've got to do the neck, <gasps> which will take like... No time at all. Yeah. Compared well, I'm thinking like... about like five, ten yards. And, I mean, I've still got a couple repeats on the bottom. Laura got excited. I did get very excited. Early. So, this is the arm part, and then I have to do ten repeats of this sequence. It so looks like you're on eight right now. I'm working on the eighth. Yeah. I'm really trying to finish this, because I want to go to other things. And it's pretty, and we're getting into that season. Yeah, this is a linen silk blend, so... Um, by Oink Pigments. It's the DK Wave. Um, I think it might fit. We'll see. Um, if it doesn't, it's fine. It'll go to somebody else that it does fit. Um, because I, I'm just, I'm not super diligent about making sure I'm staying on gauge. So I can't get upset if the things don't fit. So um, I let that go a couple years ago for the most part. Like if it doesn't fit, it's fine. It'll fit somebody. And it's not like I can't knit another damn sweater <laughs> so um yeah so i'm knitting this uh, i think it'll fit on fours i think yeah three and a half millimeter needles Those the zing needles i think so yeah they're knit pro yeah so um the tips aren't super sharp but this is a heavy enough yarn that it doesn't they don't really need to be it, they probably need to be less sharp because of the linen nature yeah of the yarn. it is a little splitty um, but it's two different, very long staple fibers. So, um, that's it. I didn't knit on my socks. I didn't knit on my shawl. I didn't knit on, um, the Why hat. are you trying to finish something? Like, I just really, I would love for this to be done next week. And it can definitely, if I actually put time into it, that can definitely happen. So I think it will happen because we'll be at my parents' that's true. house. And I'm and taking this for sure. And, you know, one other thing, probably. Do you have another sweater that you have work to work no, on? No, but I've got that painting bricks shawl. Yeah. Which would be a good... That um, would be excellent. And everything's already skeined up, so that makes it easy. I'm going to wind another skein of sock yarn and take the stripey unicorn, I think. Hopefully I can get some between the car rides, because Leslie drives. Mm -hmm. Um... Hopefully I can get some good progress on the this part. That's the plan for tomorrow is really buckling down. And I like that too. I'll take all your spinning. <laughs> this has a plan. Oh. Sorry, you can't have it. Plus it's Southern Cross. Damn and now man. it's like gold. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that I cannot get more of. <laughs> um, so, I have a finished object. <clears throat> I finished my socks. You can have that if you want to. I didn't label it. Um, I finished some Geektastic socks out of um, toys, and Misfit, Misfit toys. toys. And you can see how long those are. I just need to weave in the ends. So those are ready to go. I'm super happy. Uh, one of my coworkers was calling these the Rainbow Bright socks. <laughs> and I am here for it. Uh, my little 80s heart is here for both those references. So those are ready to go. Here, I'll weave in your ends. Oh, thank you. And then what Leslie keeps trying to steal is some Suburban Stitcher Oatmeal BFL. This, um, so let me back up. Uh, uh, Jillian Marino did a 100-day spin every day for 100 days, or think about spinning or work with hand spun uh, her, through her Patreon. Her Patreon is amazing. If you are looking for spinning content, it is my favorite. It's a great community. And, um... I went a little bit bonkers the last couple weeks. Um, I was really putting forth a lot of energy into spinning. So I have 30, well, I had 31 bobbins to ply. And total over the 100 days, I spun 174.2 ounces. 
Um, I've given away over a pound. This will make it well over a pound and a quarter because um, I gave Holly, Holly, Lowell, you, then you again, and then I knit, um, I spun and knit a scarf and gave that to Lowell. Oh yeah. So, I've I've gotten over, I've gotten an ounce and four. No, I've gotten a pound and four ounces out of the stash, which is nice. Um, it's just loads of fun. I did not spend the most by far, but that is fine. Um, I'm very happy for the person who did. And it was nice to like really go through what I had because this coincided with um, Gwen coming to clean and organize. So now almost everything is in my spreadsheet, so I know exactly where it is and in one bin. And I've been making all the hand spun plans. This was going to be part of a it's sweater. Still no, it's I'm fine. Not steal your stuff. No, you can take it. I have plenty more. And she's it's this is suburban stitcher, so I can get more. Um I am gonna make you label it yourself though, since you're stealing it. So uh what I have in my hands. I started plying today, so I applied five, bob five bobbins today. This is a three-ply out of Suburban Stitcher Oatmeal BFL in the Swamp colorway. It is much prettier, although the lighting's doing a decent job. Yeah. Outside, it is gorgeous. Like, it is just stunning. It's got stunning. a lot of more shades of brown and sort of topazy. And green, yeah, colors. like a green. Um, so this is 220 yards, so a true worsted of a three-ply. Um, I am intending to spin up some random braids for a sweater that was in the ply sweater issue, which is really pretty. I'll have to show it to you because it's perfect for random braids oh, cool. and you keep stealing my yarn. I do. So, and it's DK weight. So worse it will work, but, um, I think you have some DK weight. I hands do. Fun. So I'll show that to you later. Um, so yeah, this is the first thing that got plied today and it's, be a felon lovely. And then the other thing that Leslie tried to steal that she can <laughs> is eight ounces of Southern Cross fiber. This is 650 yards after washing. It's going to be an Andrea Mowry travel, a traveler cowl. Um, so I spun it specifically for that. I don't know if it's going to be for me or not. It might go to my grandmother, but I'm leaning towards me. I wear blues a lot. And that is the correct, like, neon coral versus peach. <laughs> so, <clears throat> there is that. Um, so, yeah, this is Comeback. I don't know why I put Crossback in the show notes. It's Comeback, uh, which is a breed that is specific to Australia New Zealand. It's basically um, either a Bond or a Cordell sheep that is bred back to another fine fleece, like a Merino. So Bond and Cordale are typically, well, they are a combination of a long wool and a merino. And then that, that child is then bred back to merino again. So the third generation is a comeback. That's very so, complicated. Yeah, just a smidge. Um, Southern Cross Fiber is unfortunately closing shop. He's retiring after 15 years, which excellent for him. David deserves it. He's yeah. wonderful. But that's why Leslie can't have my stuff. Period. <laughs> no one can. I'm going to be very greedy. His stuff is gorgeous. And um, it's definitely like these colors I would not think, oh, I love them in the bag. And then when I spun them up, I'm like, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. This is what I need. So excellent on that. Um, it was like so I spun that 174 ounces and then I knit over a pound of my hand spun, um, like a mittens for Wheezy, two scarves, a baby hat, some other stuff. So I'm really happy with the progress that I've made. And I did two sweater spins, two socks, three sock spins. So in that, um, 174 ounces. So I'm really happy with that. I have lots of pretty I want yarn to see in the stuff. Sweater spins. Well, the first one's the striped unicorn one. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that was done within the time frame yeah. of this. Yep. So the striped unicorn was done during this time frame, and then the second one is for a James Watts Mystic Square. Is that an Inglenook? 
Mm. No, it's um, a pound and a quarter of Hello Yarn. It's those big purple bobbins yeah. that I was rewinding. Okay. So I have those to apply. I still have one to rewind and then those to apply. So. Is that all of the spinning that you brought? Because I feel like there's so much more spinning. Well, I didn't bring a ton of... I, I did not bring 30 bobbins because that seemed excessive. You're going to show it as you apply? Yeah, I thought I would show it as I apply that way. It's a little bit more spread out. Um, and also your dog is a bobbin thief. That is true. And I didn't know that he would be outside when I got here, so I didn't want to come in with a bin of bobbins and <laughs> then there'd be bobbins. I mean, I wouldn't let him steal your stuff. But... <laughs> There would be bobbing chaos. Buffy, the good dog, is by my feet the right now. Just chilling because she's such a good girl. She's too old to make too much trouble. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. So she's down there. So yeah, that is all that I have. But you have spinning. I do. So over the past, I don't know, six months, I've been spinning a pound and a half that I got from hip strings in a trade where I sewed something for Jill and she made a one of a kind colorway um, for me, which was made of like reds and pale golds. Um, and it was on like an oatmeal base. I think the Merino was an oatmeal color, but I could be wrong. Um, it's really pretty it and is, it's got silk content. Mm -hmm. It's 70% Merino, 30% uh, silk. So I spun it and um, I don't remember where I put the um, swatches, but uh, I spun it and then I rewound it onto weaving bobbins and I put about 20 of them. I showed those last week and then I applied it. I'm so impressed your dogs let you apply. Yeah, it was a balancing act of um, being able to do it with them around. So it was a lot of like trips outside to throw the ball and then I would get about a half an hour of them resting Yeah. when I could, could ply. So um, anyway, there are your socks. Thank you. Socks for me here. Because Leslie knows I just keep a pile of socks to weave in the end. So. Um, basically I'll do anything to not knit on that sweater. <laughs> so I finished um, applying and then I took these over to Laura's yesterday so that I could use her Daedalus um, whirly gig whirly gig to um, wind. wind off and it's got the electric counter built into it and it's um, very fancy so uh, I ended up with about 2,000 yards after shrinkage I'm being very generous with my percentage of shrinkage um, and I ended up with yeah. Like so pretty. About 2,000 yards of a worsted slash DK. Um, I'm really happy with it. I, I'm still pattern hunting, but I've got a couple of options. I think a swingy, drapey, open cardigan. Yeah, awesome. so Holly made this one last year that I really liked, or maybe it was two years ago at this point, but it's called Growing, and it's like... Um, you know, an open cardigan and it kind of tilts upward a little bit at the front corners and it's got these big pockets. Yeah. Um, and it's made or it's designed to be knit with like fingering and a strand of like mohair or whatever. So like a DK. Yeah. Um, but the gauge works for yeah. my swatch. So I might do that, but I'm not going to even think about it until I'm much closer to being done with my SSK stash because I... I'm feeling the pressure to finish it. The pressure I'm putting on myself, no one else. Yeah, so what do you still have left in the SSK stash? I've got three skeins of a sport weight, of solid sport weight colors from Why Not that I'm going to use for color work hats from Tin Can Knits and the Candy Shop um, collection. Yeah. Um, what else have I got? I, three or four skeins of fingering weight for socks that I need to make. And then there are some other things that are in there, but they were given to me and I didn't purchase them. So I depends on how close I get to the other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Plus I've still got my uh, pressed flowers 
cardigan on the needles. I've still got the painting bricks shawl on the needles. I've still got um, the ear flap hat on the needles. I've still got the dolly socks on the needles. So I have a lot still to do. Um, I still feel pretty confident that I can make it happen. So and yeah. if I can't, it, who cares? Right? Yep. In five years, none of that will matter. So. Yep. Um, in two days yeah none of that exactly. matter. um remind me when we leave this room i need to put this in a bag yeah you do because otherwise jordy will destroy it and i might actually murder him cause him some harm <laughs> and i don't want that to happen so um as far oh, i'm gonna put this with that too as far as um books and reading and stuff I was listening to the um, Innkeeper series, and I had already purchased the first five. There's four, and then there's a short story, and then the sixth one um, I had never listened to. I had read it, and then I purchased it and realized why I hadn't listened to it because the narrator changed again. Like, they changed the narrator when the books changed to Maud's perspective. Yeah. And that same person did the next one. And she was fine. Like, she was different, but it was fine. But this... The person that's doing the sixth book is just... I got a minute and 43 seconds into it, and I was like, I can't. It's just too much different. Like, the dialect, the pronunciation so of the key it? words. Yeah. Um, which I think I've already done once. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I went and looked at my Kindle library and I already owned it and was it, had read it. Yeah. But I've already forgotten it. So I'm reading it again. And then, so I needed something to listen to. And I've been listening off and on to Leslie Jones's, um. Biography. Mm-hmm. Autobiography. Memoir. Um, called Leslie Effin Jones. And it's very good. I feel like the audiobook and the book book are two totally separate books because she embellishes a lot of the stories though I don't want to say embellishes but like she adds her emotion and her you know like she's talking um you know one of the things that she was talking about was a very emotional kind of um conversation and like you can hear the tears in her voice yeah. like um it's very good it adds another element to but it. it's kind of intense so I need something to alternate it with yeah so I am re-listening to the Edge series by Alona Andrews oh. because apparently I can't get enough Alona Andrews. That is, I mean, probably yes. not surprising to anyone who's ever watched an episode of this podcast. <laughs> so I'm on the first one. Oh, good! Where I we, can listen with you in the car on Wednesday. Where we meet Georgie and Jack when they are babies and Rose. Yep. So what about you? What are you reading? Or I am listening to. Um... I want to reread the Tamora Pierce series, so I'm listening to the Becca Cooper sequence. Um, the first one starts with Puppy, and I'm kind of going in chronological order versus, like, time-wise versus when they were written. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting with that. I have them already um, from years ago when I listened to them, so I'm enjoying them. They're high fantasy like I grew up with her in the 90s hmm. so she was one of the female authors I really enjoyed as a child um, so I'm just re-listening to those what about watching are you watching anything um I started the great pottery throwdown today hmm. also we're two seasons behind so does it have um Siobhan yes I yes love Siobhan so I got a couple minutes into that, but then I had to take a nap. Um, not because of that, but because when I am on spring break or any break, Leslie knows, my brain's like, freedom! Mm. And I switched to my normal not work schedule, which is I stay up till like 2 a.m. And sleep until like 7 and then take a nap. Um... I mean, you don't need to just, like, I go to, on the weekends, I get up between 7 and 8, and by noon I'm ready for a nap. So, like, yeah. you don't have to justify No, it. I like, I'm definitely a night person, but when I'm working, I have to be up at 5 a.m., so a lot of times I will go to bed at, like, 10, 11, yeah. unfortunately. 
if I had to be up at five, I would probably be in bed by like nine or ten. <laughs> so I start my like wind down routine. I have been playing a lot of Disney Dream Light Valley because that's something I do when I'm off. Mm -hmm. Um and thinking about other, I've been watching some YouTube videos on other cozy gaming things. So nothing super exciting. We've been catching up on Drag Race as well. We are still two behind. Yeah. Okay. Because I was watching the pit stop today. Oh. And there's still two. Okay. I enjoyed. I've only watched one pit stop this time, and it was the one with James. The recap. That's like one first. of the newest. James Mansfield? Yeah, but it recaps where we are, too. Oh, okay, then we're only one behind. Okay. Because I saw there were two episodes behind a Pit Stop. Okay. So I assumed one of those was a new episode. Yes, and it's highly sponsored by uh, a hair dye company. Because okay. um, he has to work on the wig as yeah. they talk about the thing. And I love James Mansfield. Yeah. And he's, like, the right amount of snark. Um, so there is that. Um, yeah, I've just been doing a lot of spinning, enjoying, I zoomed with some friends, just doing my zooms and doing the SSK zooms and just enjoying, enjoying life. Good. It's nice to have this little week off so that I can do, catch up on things like housework. Yeah. I did a lot of laundry today. Yeah, I've still got laundry I've got to do so that I can actually have clean clothes to take to your parents' house. Yeah. Things that are important. I did miss like taking the garbage to the curb this morning because usually I do that when you're Sunday leaving. night or yeah. when I'm leaving and usually they don't come till like 2 p.m. Well, they were here at 7 a.m., my friend, because <laughs> when I took it out at 8, they had already come. Yeah. But, Yeah. Luckily, I won't be there yeah, for... To generate garbage. To generate garbage. I can just go right back out at the curb. Um, if I get into a real bind, the Airbnb can help out. Um, I can't remember anything that I watched this week, so it must not have been anything good. Uh, yeah, there's a couple things coming out soon that I'm interested Task in. Taskmaster will be out soon. Yeah. Taskmaster season 17. Laura and I watched the uh, YouTube thing with um, one of the hosts and what's the guy's name? Ed Gamble. Ed Gamble, a previous contestant. Discussing um, who it was going to be on. And I know none of the people that they listed, which I mean doesn't mean. I know one of the guys because he was on uh, Ted Lasso. Yeah. yeah, it just means that they haven't been on anything I've seen, but that doesn't mean that he's a popular. good villain on Ted Lasso. So it'll be interesting to see him not in that role. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything else. Do you? Nope. And it's warm up here. It is warm up here. Um, all right. Well, you guys have an awesome week and we will talk to you next time. Bye y'all. Bye y'all.